Y'all hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. As usual, y'all, we are headed out in a boot. Check this out. Remember last time we met? It was pissing down snow. It was yucky and gray skies. Well, what a difference a week makes, huh? It's a beautiful sunny day. I don't, I'm not sure exactly where we are in the progression of things here. I've lost track. I don't know if this is spring or if it's fault spring. It's a, if it's fault spring, it's at least second fault spring, but it's supposed to be like up in the 60s this weekend or soon anyway. So I'm going to try to enjoy it. I'm going to try to get out and walk some and just see what happens. Maybe winter will come back and this will turn out to be second fall spring and we'll wait for actual spring to come around the bend. Whatever. I might try to get out and walk today. It just depends on how things go. But for right now, y'all, we got to run some errands. So I told y'all that I've been struggling. And part of my struggle was, um, I'm sure I told y'all that I've been eating peanut butter. And we know better than that because peanut, well, for one, I don't just eat a little bit of peanut butter. I eat a lot of peanut butter and that's not good because though peanut butter is packed with protein, it's also packed with calories and it's a bunch of Weight Watchers points. And when I eat it, I don't measure it and I don't count the points, I just go rogue. So I have stopped doing that. And the pounds that I, y'all, I seriously put on pounds from eating peanut butter. Those pounds are coming off but I still need to adjust some things. So we talked about how one of the things that I do in order to make good choices and try to eat healthy and be fit is that I keep easy and nutritious snacks around. We talked about what I eat for snacks, how I make snacks, how I use snacks. So I have my snack game on lock and I have pretty much, I feel like a good basic structure for my day on Weight Watchers. But y'all, where I, st well, I struggle a couple of places. One, I'm a cockroach. I have a voracious sweet tooth. And if I eat sugar, I wanna eat all the sugar. So I try not to eat sugar. I do have some things that I eat that are sweet that kind of take care of my sweet tooth. I mentioned Built Bars, I think, in my snack video. And on my long teaching days, I've started trying to be more disciplined and eat some Greek yogurt with fruit and a Built Bar in the afternoon because that's tons of protein and the Built Bar is sweet. So that takes care of my sweet tooth and will hopefully keep me from just binging when I finish teaching and come downstairs to make dinner. If I'm really hungry, I just eat. Like whatever I see, I'll just eat it. So if I have that hearty snack in the middle of the afternoon, hopefully that keeps me from doing that like bear coming out of hibernation thing while I'm cooking. Seriously, y'all, while I'm cooking like a three point dinner, I eat like 20 points in ridiculousness. So I'm trying to get that under control. But another thing that I think will help is desserts. I haven't really thought about what kind of good desserts there are out there or what kind of good desserts we can make that are high in protein, low in calories, so they're Weight Watchers friendly, but that they're good and sweet. And y'all, I'm not talking about like eat an apple or have some fruit and yogurt because that's typically what I do. After dinner, I'll have some fruit and yogurt, which is fine. It's a great choice unless you want something sweet. So here's my mission for today. I'm going out to get supplies and I'm going to make some desserts. And when I say some desserts, I mean, I'm going to make some desserts, y'all. I don't know what I'm going to make. I have a little bit of a plan. I don't have much of a plan. But the first step in the plan is to go out and get the ingredient ingredients for my desserts because I like I kind of have this amorphous idea of what I want to make so I just want to put some things together and maybe calculate some points and see what I can come up with some things that are like I said high in protein low in calories and sweet but not like weird artificial sweetener sweet so that's going to be like one disqualifier if it has that artificial sweetener taste I'm out I cannot deal with that stuff and not just because it's unhealthy, because it is unhealthy, but y'all, I'll do some unhealthy stuff. 
not just because it's unhealthy. I don't like the taste. And I know that if I have a dessert sitting around and it's got that artificial sweetener taste, I'm not gonna eat that. I'm gonna probably go for a higher points option because I don't like the taste of the artificial sweetener. So those are gonna be immediate disqualifiers. So that's the plan. I'm gonna try to make some things that are sweet, low points, high protein, maybe not high protein, I don't know, but I think if they've got higher protein content, it'll knock the points down some. So now I'm just rabbling. So y'all, let me go. I have a couple of stops to make. So let me do this, get the supplies together, and I'll see you back at the house. And by then, hopefully I'll have something of a plan in place so we can get started. All right, friends, we're home. I got our supplies unloaded. Let me show you what we got. I got the Kodiak Power Cakes mix in dark chocolate. I'm excited to get into this. I've been reading about it a bunch and just had not taken the plunge until now. So I'm gonna try this. It's high in protein. It's 14 grams of protein per serving. So hopefully that'll offset some, I don't know, carbs or something and make it good. I got some sugar-free, fat-free Jello in cheesecake. Uh, well, you'll see what we're going to do with this. Vanilla and chocolate. Make some things with that. Standard Greek yogurt. And by standard, I mean plain and non-fat. Don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I grabbed some lower, what is it, lower reduced fat Cool Whip. Figure we can mix this with some stuff and see what we can make. I got some more, I'm not gonna show it to you because it's self-rising flour, but I got some more self-rising flour because remember, the stuff that I had, was it last week or week before? I just found it in my pantry, so I don't know how long it had been there. So I got some fresh self-rising flour and some mint extract. I don't know, I figured we could put this in some stuff and see what it does. And I've got the standards. I have eggs and flour and plain unsweetened almond milk, so I have those in case I need them to use and stuff. So I'm gonna start off, the first thing that I'm gonna make is some muffins with this Kodiak powder mix stuff. I'm so excited about these. They're called Miracle Muffins, and y'all, it's gonna be a miracle if these things are actually what they claim to be. It's half a cup of any flavor of the Kodiak Power Cakes powder, two eggs, and two bananas mashed up. You just mix it up, that makes six muffins. And then you bake them, I think it's 350 for like, I don't know, 22 to 25 minutes. So I'm gonna get that going and get those in the oven while we make some other stuff. While those muffins are baking, let's see if we can put something together with maybe some yogurt and some fat-free, sugar-free Jello mix. So I'm gonna start with three quarters of a cup of yogurt and a tablespoon of one of the pudding mixes and blend it well and see what we get. All right, let's give this a try and see what we got. It's not bad. Y'all saw I whisked it pretty well, so it's kind of fluffy. Can you see that? It's kind of fluffy. If you whisk non-fat Greek yogurt and get some air into it, it gives it kind of like a fluffy, dip kind of feeling instead of that like heavy yogurt feeling. This is not bad. It's got a nice chocolatey taste. It definitely still has that like Greek yogurt taste to it, that like Greek yogurt kind of, I don't know, tart weirdness to it. And that Jello definitely has some kind of artificial sweetener going on. But it's not overbearing. I think the yogurt, sorry, I'm talking with food in my mouth. I think the yogurt is actually cutting that artificial sweetenerness. And if I chill this, I think it's gonna actually be pretty good. So I'm gonna give a thumbs up to this. That's one point for three quarters of a cup because the pudding has points. So that's one point for three quarters of a cup of this chocolate moussey kind of deal. So I'm gonna count that as a dessert option. You know what else I've been dying to try? It's one of those mug cakes. So that's two tablespoons of self-rising flour, one tablespoon of some kind of granulated sweetener, which sounds like kind of a lot. So I might ease into the sweetener as I'm mixing it and kind of taste as I go along, but it calls for one tablespoon of sweetener. So let's see how we do with that. Two teaspoons of unsweet cocoa powder. Ooh, and y'all, I have that really good Giardelli cocoa from when we made those healthy hot chocolates. So I'm gonna use that. 
a quarter teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon reduced fat butter, but I'm gonna use coconut oil, two tablespoons of unsweet almond milk, we got that, an eighth teaspoon of vanilla extract. Y'all, I wonder if I could use the mint. You know what, I'm gonna make one just the plain way, and then maybe I'll make one with the mint extract. See if I can make like a Girl Scout cookie thin mint flavored one, that might be good. And then you can use like, um mini chocolate chips or something, but I don't have those, so I'm not using them. So I'm gonna throw all this together, and then you can either microwave it or bake it in the oven. I think I'm gonna bake mine in the oven to give it the best chance of not sucking. So let's give this a shot and see what we come up with. y'all I am exceptionally unconvinced about this so I've mixed together all the stuff and it's more like kind of a ball of dough than some batter I haven't added any sweetener yet I'm going to add half a teaspoon of stevia mix that in well and see what we get now I feel like I'm at risk of overworking the dough so I'm just going to do this give it a little taste let's give this a little taste Oh, it's sticky. Oh, and it tastes horrible. Oh, that's exceptionally not good. Should we put in more sweetener? Oh, how I wish y'all could talk to me right now. What is that taste? All right, I think I'm just gonna put in some more sweetener, throw it in the oven and see what happens. Because it calls for, what, a tablespoon? And I put in half a teaspoon. So we're at like a sixth of what it wants. So let's put in small, let's not put in that much. That feels like a lot. I mean, it definitely wasn't good without it, so maybe it'll be good with it. It's actually better. I wonder if I was just overwhelmed by that chocolate. This mug is probably definitely more than what we need, but let's just stick it in the oven and see what comes out. I have one more recipe for us to try, y'all, and I'm trying to be excited about this. I've seen it lots of places with great comments, so let's just see how it comes out. This is a Weight Watchers friendly zero point cheesecake. I know, let's, ju let's just give it a shot. So here's how you make it. Combine three eggs, three cups Greek yogurt, one small box, instant fat-free, sugar-free cheesecake flavored pudding mix, a tablespoon of vanilla, and three tablespoons of granulated sweetener. Y'all, three tablespoons, I know. We're gonna try it, we're gonna see what we get. So three tablespoons of sweetener. Mix all that stuff together well, Bake it at 350 for 30 minutes. Let it cool. It says chill it overnight. I'm gonna let it cool and taste it. And then if we need to chill it further from there, we'll make that decision when the time comes. So let me put this together and get it in the oven. The cheesecake's all mixed up, so I'm gonna pour it into a pie pan that I've sprayed well and let it bake at 350 for about 30 minutes and see what we get. In the meantime, our mug cake, or whatever we're calling it, has come out of the oven. So let's give it a try. It smells good. The consistency is a little bit gooey, I think, but let's see. Consistency is definitely gooey, and it's very, oh look, I can just take the whole thing out. That's what we got going on there. Obviously, it would have cooked up thicker if I had used a mug that was less wide. It's not bad. Honestly, y'all, it's just that stevia taste. 
I hope I don't have chocolate in my teeth. But here are my full-on thoughts on that mug cake thing. It's a little bit mushy. I don't think it's bad. I don't think I put too much sweetener in it because there's a lot of chocolate. So, well, and I used that Giardelli chocolate. So maybe it would be better if you used a cheaper chocolate because that Giardelli has like that really intense chocolate taste. So maybe with a little less chocolate, you could use a little less of the sweetener. That's my only real complaint is that it's got a very strong sweetener taste. So if you don't mind that stevia taste, it might actually be a good quick dessert option for you. And you can cook it in the microwave oven for like, I don't know, a minute or something, and then it's done. There are some other versions of it that are not chocolate, and those might be worth a try too. So maybe we'll try those some other day, but it's almost time to try the Miracle Muffins. And y'all, I am the most excited about those. The cheesecake and the muffins are about to come out of the oven and the intern has made a surprise appearance. So I might get him to taste test them with me, but I'm gonna do a quick workout while everything cools so that I don't have to do anything else for the day. Y'all, the muffins are out of the oven and they're still hot, but I'm excited, so I'm gonna try it anyway. And I'm gonna regret this decision, I know I am. The cheesecake is still baking. It needs a couple more minutes and then it has to cool. So I'm gonna have to come back later, later and try that. But let's try this Kodiak Miracle Muffin. One point. Oh, that's hot, y'all. It's good. It's a little bit strange. It's spongy. They're denser than the average muffin, but that's all that protein, I think. And you're supposed to use overripe bananas, but y'all, I eat bananas way too fast. They don't get overripe in my house. So I think if I want to make these, like make them proper, I need to set aside some bananas and let them die. But this is good. It's like a party in my mouth and not in a naughty way. Now let's be, so the intern tried it and said, oh, it's good for what it is. And he's exactly right. I've chocolate in my teeth now for sure. Y'all, this is not a chocolate cupcake. This is a high protein chocolate muffin. So this is a chocolate muffin for one point. It's, I think it's very good. I think it'll be a good option for me for, like I said before, a mid afternoon snack. I think they're gonna be very filling and you could get creative, maybe break it up and put some strawberries over it or something. There are ways to sort of gussy these up, but y'all, I'm very happy with this. I think these are very tasty. So I'm gonna let the cheesecake finish baking. I think I'm about to pull it out of the oven. I'll let it cool and then I'll come back and let you know how that turned out. The cheesecake came out looking absolutely beautiful. Now, it might taste like pure awful, I don't know, but I wanna give it every opportunity to actually taste good. So I'm gonna let it cool a lot. I might let it cool overnight, I'm not sure yet, but I am gonna let it cool thoroughly, so I will be back when I decide to taste it. The cheesecake has cooled for a couple of hours, y'all, so let's see what we've got. The consistency is a little weird, but I expected that. I read that it would be. I wonder if I let it cool overnight, if it would be a little less weird, but I mean, it's firm, it's, it's cheesecakey. Let's give it a taste. It's not bad, it's very sweet. Y'all, I think I might just not like stevia. I've read that monk fruit doesn't have that weird like back taste that stevia does, but I also read folks ranting about how much stevia is in this recipe and that it would have like a bitter back taste, which it doesn't, but I didn't really, I think I put in maybe two tablespoons instead of three. But anyway, I don't mind the consistency and y'all, this is zero points. So I will give a 
ton of leeway for zero points. And I was thinking, I wonder how it would be with a little fruit. So I got out the fruit that I have thawing to eat with my Greek yogurt. And I'm going to try a bite of it with just some strawberry and a random blueberry on it. Let's taste it. That's actually pretty nice. Sorry, now I definitely have food all in my teeth. That's nice, y'all. I don't mind that at all. I was also thinking that first thing that we made with the pudding powder mix and the Greek yogurt, that chocolate one, that would be really nice with some frozen, well, like thawed out frozen fruit with it. Y'all know how I love my thawed out frozen fruit with Greek yogurt. Thawed out frozen fruit with a little chocolate Greek yogurt. We might be onto something here. So the cheesecake is a little bizarre, but it's tasty. It's a little sweet. If I were to make it again, I might try a little less sweetener, but I really don't hate it. Y'all remember... <laughs> This is giving me cup a cup a cup of vibes. Remember cup a cup a cup of from Steel Magnolias when um, Dolly Parton somebody asked Dolly Parton about her cup a cup a cup of recipe and she gives them the recipe and she says um, bake it at 350 till it's gold and bubbly. She says I serve mine over ice cream to cut the sweetness. You might want to serve this over ice cream to cut the sweetness, but no seriously y'all it's it's tasty it's good. So I'm gonna call the cheesecake a success. The Miracle Muffins, a huge success. The That weird fluffy Greek yogurt and chocolate pudding stuff, that was good. I'm going to try that with some other flavors of pudding and see what we get. I might try to find some kind of pudding that's not artificially sweetener sweetened. That's my only real issue with that one. The That mug, that mug cake thing, I'm going to give that one a thumbs down. It might just be me, y'all. I really think maybe I'm not a big fan of stevia. I might need to find a different sweetener to try. And I might try monk fruit, see how that does, because I've seen lots of places where people talk about that mug cake thing, but it might be clickbait. I am a sucker for some clickbait. So anyway, y'all, there are some Weight Watcher friendly, low calorie, high protein, low point desserts for you to try. Let me know what other desserts you're trying, and if you've tried any of these with some variations, let me know how that went. Y'all, thank you so, so much for coming to my channel. If you've made it this far, we're definitely friends now, so go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I upload food and fitness content on Mondays with some book videos sprinkled in between. See you on the next one.